All right. So, everyone, we do want to welcome you formally to the cover reveal of Wrong Way to Heaven by Kevin Petway. This is his first novel in his new series. Uh, it still is in the same world as the Misplaced Mercenary series, but this is their brand new characters and a whole new adventure. And it's so much fun. And this is the third book released in this uh, Misplaced Adventures that we are on. And we're very excited about it. So thank you for coming. Um, we are going to read by we, I mean me. I'm going to read the back cover copy so everyone can get a little hint of what the, uh, oh, actually, we should probably do the cover reveal first so that you can look at the cover while you hear the dulcet tones of my voice. Yay! Yay! Wrong way to heaven! Um, I do want to ask, unfortunately, it looks like the artist could not be with us tonight, but she's amazing. And I know when you first saw the cover, you were like, mm, I think we need a few changes. And I think it's hilarious that you came up with like a whole list of changes and um, your wife, Lena, because, you know, she this is what she does for a living. Right. She does the the um, uh, graphic design for a living. So she was like she made a video to make it very clear uh, of what y'all were taking and I sent all of it to Molly and Molly just made all the changes. I mean, what was yeah, that like, like to actually have minutes. someone that just totally it, it worked with perfect. you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it took no time at all, and it and then it was perfect. It was exactly what we wanted. Yeah, is that the typical experience with working with an artist? No, oh, God, no, not even remotely. <laughs> So excellent. So as you can see, um, each series has a different color and Kevin Petway's color is orange. Um, there's a lot of desert involved with his uh, with his series, at least with the first one and with where the people are from. Um, and because the main character, Masika, which I will tell you a little about in a minute, um, she is from. Tell us where she's from, Kevin. She's from Egrin, mm -hmm. uh, which is the. Um, They consider themselves to be the capital of the uh, the Darish Empire. The other Darish countries uh, don't really acknowledge an empire, but um, you know they they consider themselves to be the most important country in the world, um, you know, bar none. And uh, Masika is um, she is well. Actually, I'm not going to I, I'm not going to step on what you're about to say because I know I know what you're about to read. Um, which incidentally, because Kelly is reading the back cover copy and and I, I had asked her, um, do you want me to read the back cover copy? And she's like, no, 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 don't don't worry about that. You need to read. You need to read something else. Just now found out that's because Kelly's going to read the back cover copy. Exactly. But <laughs> I take the easy road. OK, I mean, you know, when you're in charge, you get to chase the easy stuff. Plus, they don't want me to read your book. They want well, a professional narrator to read it. But when that one's not available, they want the author to read it so that that's why you're here you're here to entertain the fans yep dance monkey that's right exactly <laughs> so let me read the back cover copy and then we will talk a little bit more about this new adventure uh brave and clever young masika the daughter of a diplomat and niece of an emperor who has discovered a pair of ex-gods in a secret dungeon below the fell citadel she promises to return them home only to be thwarted by the king of the gods himself High King Oldham of the Allier. So Masika takes matter into her own hands and sets off to find a way to bring her new friends to their home, despite the High King's wishes. But a deal with a very questionable imp painted on a playing card in a seedy tavern sets the trio on a desperate adventure for help to the Allier's constant and deadly enemy, the gods of the Darish Empire. Can Masika, no matter how resourceful, Hope to overcome the will of two sets of deities to keep her promise. Hostile enemies, ancient sorcerers, and primordial monsters bar the way, but none is so formidable as Masika's most elegant and proper older sister, Meridides. Did I say her name right? You did. And yes. um, so I can I can I take that as uh, uh -huh. because the last time I saw that 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 cover copy was when I was sending it to you for approval. So I'm yep. going to assume then that it's approved. It's approved. <laughs> okay. No, I loved it. You said to me, I was like, um, that's perfect. And I just put it on the back cover. Look at that. Wonderful. It's wonderful. I guess, you know, six books in, you know, we've, we've got this thing going. <laughs> we, we could just read each other's minds now. It's kind of cool. Yeah, as so. long as you can get me in front of the computer in time to, to I you know. I did, for the... thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> so we are good to go. Well, so this whole story, so this one is, it also has like a very different tone from the first series. Now it's, it's still hilarious because that's like required. Um, but this one you have, you know, a young royal instead of an old, well, older, but not old mercenary. Um mercenaries that were like kind of the theme in the first book this one is more you know a young royal she's had a different life experience she's going through things differently she looks at the world differently so the tone of the book is different and i'm wondering why did you decide to go that route so there were really a couple of reasons um one is just sort of the name of the whole project is not misplaced mercenaries it's it's misplaced adventures so i wanted it to be um you know it's because it's still in that world, there's still a lot of, um, oh gosh, um, there's that, that sort of hard bitten quality to it. But um, Masika herself is much more optimistic. Um, and um, generally happy. Um, Keen was, you know, always he was always trying to, 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 to look behind people's backs and see the angles and try to figure out how everybody was trying to screw him, which generally they were. Mm -hmm. Um, but Masika comes from a whole different place. Um, you know, she, the, the, the idea behind her is that she's somebody who's never faced a lot of adversity because she's never had to, she grew up very privileged. Mm -hmm. And, um, once I got the idea of that character I just kind of I really liked it and, and sort of ran with it um now you've 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 certainly got some of those um more sarcastic um you know folks in the book mm -hmm. um Rain is he's not well I guess he's not actually sarcastic so much as he is an asshole um and, and he's loud and about so, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And getting getting everybody on that same page is is like a big part of the arc, you know, where where everybody's it it is that found family, but they have to earn it. They can't just, you know, walk into a room and say, Oh, you're my best friend. That's not the way it works. <laughs> Especially yeah. with gods. And and a and a big part of the theme is what the what what tremendous assholes the gods are. Mm -hmm. Um and these Sorry, guys go have been tortured for centuries. Yeah, these two particular ones. They have they have been underneath um, the Fell Citadel in um, in the in Angram's dungeons, and uh, in the the last books, um, Queen Jasmine uh, is victimized by Angram and is altered and all of the, the things that he does to her he perfected over the centuries on Rain and Heron so they are they have been his lab rats for you know millennia um and it you know kind of colors their thinking just a bit yeah, just just a bit I don't blame him and it's not like they had a great childhood either. Childhood, as in being with the other gods. So this is very interesting. I, I love I love the things you're going here, but I can't just talk about it because I'll give too much away. Um, but what I would like to do is um, have you read a section. And I think, did we decide that you were going to read from the short story, which is kind of the, um, the where this yeah. all began for these three characters? Yeah, the short story is kind of the, the preamble for the book. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of long. Um, so I will get started. And this is this is just the first uh, scene as uh, as everybody is showing up at the Fell Citadel. Um, so I say you, you could ready, probably go all the way to the point where she actually finds the gods. That should be a good. Uh, and if people want to read the rest of it, they must get. Uh, the uh, last night at the Jolly Chicken and get all the cool short stories in Misplaced Adventures. All right, let's see here. Now that's like, it's about 10 pages. You okay with that? Yeah, that should be about five minutes. All right. 
I have faith in you. And uh, okay. everyone else, if anyone's watching us on Facebook, if you put a comment so I can make sure it works, that would be great. Okay. So uh, the name of the short story is The Wrong Way to Build a Sex Dungeon. The fell citadel reared up in front of the delegation, twisted spires clawing the blue sky in a murderous attempt to disembowel the few puffy white clouds overhead. Masika stared past the city of Dismond with its work crews and burned remains at the warped palace. The one painting of the citadel she had seen depicted a squat, ugly, utilitarian building of black stone that brooded down over Tyrain's capital city. This thing looked like it had been turned to gigantic teeth and poisoned antlers. It was fantastic. Papa, Papa, Masika grabbed at Tenet Oburn's arm and pointed to a section of the Citadel's roof. It lay ruptured in the sun, an exposed belly torn open and frozen in time, walls ripped and pulled high. At this distance, it was impossible to see what lay within. The young woman, half a year past 16, did not turn to see if her father was looking. That's where it happened. That's where the Hill Fury won. That's where she beat the anger under the mountain and saved the 13 kingdoms. Yes, my lot. Lahamila, I know. His smile, tired from the journey, and, if Masika were being honest, far too much information about the Hill Fury, lit a warm fire in her heart. I was there when the Holy Emperor related the tale, standing at your side, if I recall. Let us speak only in Andosh from here on out. Darish may be the more beautiful and sophisticated language, but we will be seen as condescending if we use it in the Fel Citadel. Yes, Papa. Lahamila was his pet name for her. It referred to the brilliant and beautiful flares of purple and gold light that reflected off the flame cliffs at sunset. To Masika, they meant boldness and daring. To her father's opposite side, Meridides rolled beautiful eyes heavenward and pursed full lips. Masika's older sister did not approve of her enthusiasms and was determined to undermine the Hill Fury's memory anytime she could. Still, Beyond her elegant and silent display of frustration, she did not mock Masika. This time. Shouting workmen pulled Masika's attention as they winched a tall wooden frame upright, rebuilding Dismond one home at a time. They did not dress for the chill, their pale bodies long acclimated to the constant wintry conditions here. Masika, her father, and the entire Egrin delegation, by contrast, were wrapped tight in as many layers as they could wear and continue to move. The bright colors of their clothes, in gold, reds, and greens, as well as their dark faces, marked them as alien as they could possibly be in this dour place. The citizens watched them pass, though without the hostility Masika expected. Just three months ago, these people had been at war with Egrin, although none of that had been the doing of anyone out here. A cold breeze blew the stink of old fires and charred timber into her face, they were here as an official proxy to the Holy Emperor Kasek V of Egrin, Masika's uncle and her father's eldest brother. Tenet Oburn had a reputation for honesty and compassion, unlike the rest of the family, that made him the perfect representative for missions like this. He was to express sympathy without responsibility and see if he could tease out any new opportunities for trade that would benefit Egrin. Meridides, a shark in Egrin court circles, was here to watch their father's back and listen when no one else was. Masika had no former place in the proceeding, formal place in the proceedings, but there was no way she could let her father travel to the site of the Hill Fury's greatest victory and her death without her. Tinnit Oburn doted on Masika, which contributed to Meridides' disdain, and had allowed her to train with her granduncle on her mother's side, Mahu, a member of the Emperor's Veiled Breath. Tenet trusted both of his daughters far more than their mother felt was wise. Do you think the Hill Fury's body will be here? No, probably not. King Keen probably took it back to Greenshade with him. Tenet chuckled and patted his daughter on the head while Meridides looked away. Behind them, the rest of the delegation trudged and shivered in front of their carriages. They were here to be seen offering support, whether or not they actually provided any. Can we go to Greenshade next? 
The state functions, tenant meridities, and the rest of the diplomats attended proved unutterably boring, and Masika soon vanished to search the citadel on her own. Her sharp-eyed mother would never have allowed it, but Papa took his job seriously and was easily distracted, distracted from watching inquisitive teenagers. Not that he would have stopped his favorite daughter anyway. After visiting the throne, throne room above, the palace torn open to the heavens where the hill fury destroyed the demigod Angram, the anger under the mountain. Masika decided to go low and see the catacombs where Angram had lived for hundreds of years, maybe even longer. She borrowed a lamp from a servant and tarried a moment at the doorway to the deep corridors, a chill in both her flesh and her soul. The brightly colored linen she wore, patterned and flowing, were beautiful, but not warm. Scary place, isn't it? Masika whirled, her hand on the hilt of her knife, to face a man in a wheeled chair, an expression of wry amusement on his face. You're a pretty little thing. The man was thin with a pointed beard, once dark red, but now mostly gray, and he sported a jagged scar that ran down his forehead beneath an eye patch and over one cheek. Egrin delegation? You must be Tenet Oberon's youngest. Mystica? Little? Who did he think? Oh. Her hand dropped away from the knife. Masika, your grace. She bowed her head. The man was Prince Cantal Swiftheart, brother to Queen Jasmere. She might be in a little bit of trouble here. I was just getting away from the boring old shits upstairs and looking to see where the anger did all his angering. Cantal grin grinned at her, open and disarming. Yes, sir. Tension released her taut limbs. Would she become the first to see the anger's lair outside of Dismond's royal family? Pride swelled in her chest. Well, come along then, and we'll go check it out. I was the one who found the soul of the dragon's wife down there, you know. I saved Greenshade, at the very least. Masika's head cocked to one side. I thought the Hill Fury did that. This does Gates, girl, Cantel said, waving an arm in front of himself. Isn't it enough that woman got credit for everything else? Now you want to give her mine, too? It took another 20 minutes to get down to the actual nest of the dead monster. Cantel was extraordinarily adept at navigating his chair, controlling it to the extent that even the numerous stairs offered little obstacle. Acrid mold polluted the freezing air. Cantel had held the lamp and illuminated Angram's black stone chambers. Rotting shelves held broken bottles in the front room, and the adjoining chamber was another filled with human, rema human remains. A shattered mirror stood sentinel over a hallway floor covered in bright edges, and a green wooden door lay open into a tiny library of musty books. The feeling of being in a haunted place of ancient evils that watched with malevolent hatred was easy enough to ignore. Masika, after all, had a sister. Excitement vibrated her arms and legs. Meridides would die to know where Masika was this moment. Or maybe not. Meridides did not seem to care much for anything that could not be done in an expensive gown and a face full of makeup. This is where we found Dad, Cantel said, gazing at the cracked stone floor. Jazz said Angram kept him alive long enough to understand exactly what he was doing to his daughter, how he was breaking her body and turning her into his creature. That must have been awful for him. Masika did not have as many details of Queen Jasmere in her jazz monster form as she wished but she knew enough to surmise that the process of creating her could not have been pleasant. I'm not happy it happened to Jazz, Cantel said, still staring into the past. But as for Dad, well, I'm sure it was no night in the whorehouse, but he probably deserved a lot worse. What's that? The stone wall, while not smooth, held an obviously man-made alcove above their heads, no more than six inches square. Curiosity flared in Masika. Had no one ever seen this before? Was she about to make a new discovery? Just a shelf of some kind cut into the wall. It's empty. Masika moved to the far side of the hallway and stood on her toes. The small space was too dark to see into. With a running start, she jumped, billowing pants and coat whipping in the sudden movement, and caught hold of the edge with both hands. She pulled herself up until she could peer within. I guess I didn't look that close. Cantle rolled his chair next to Masika's dangling form. Any fascinating cosmic artifacts? 
maybe a magic serving fork? A strained seam ran almost invisibly around the back wall of the tiny alcove, creating a smaller panel. The seeker reached in and pushed against it. The panel pressed a half inch backward, and with a loud click, the wall Masika hung from swung into the hall several inches. It was thrilling. That's new. The chair backed away from the wall, and Masika dropped to the ground. She moved to the side of the stone door and pulled against it, her young muscles opening the portal against the grating hinge hidden inside the wall. After pulling it far enough to accommodate Cantal's chair, they both looked within the black and sickly sweet-smelling chamber. The walls were lined with workbenches and shelves supporting a variety of odd implements, most of which Masika could not fathom the use of. They all looked as if their application were intended to bring harm or pain somehow. But the instant she spied two figures in the center of the room, Masika forgot all about the strange tools. The pair of stone tables rose to Masika's shoulders, and the bodies atop them were covered in filthy sheets. The smell in the room snapped into place as that of old wounds allowed to fester. She stepped in and lifted one of the sheets, leaving it in place where it stuck to the body beneath. What had the anger left behind? The naked corpse of a man stared at her, his pallid skin covered in faintly glowing blue tattoos. Scattered wounds oozed or crusted or adhered to the stained sheet. This isn't right. Masika pulled the sheet up around the edge to expose a thick chain, rusted and pitted, draped over the body. He's been here no less than three months. Why does he smell like untended injuries instead of rot? He's gray. He's... She touched the man's chest, careful to avoid the tattoos. He's cold. What was the purpose of this? It looks similar to what Angram did to Jazz, just, I don't know, less refined? Cantle scratched his pointed little beard and sat up straight to see better. Maybe this guy was practice. Her father would be thrilled at what she had unearthed. New information about the anger could only increase the, his standing here. Meridides would be irritated at the distraction, but who cared what she thought? And as for Masika, any discovery relating to Queen Jasmine was but one step away from the Hill Fury herself. The All corpse's right. eyes turned to Masika. Yes, nicely done. I love it. It's so exciting. We're about to meet the gods, and she has no idea that they're gods. So it's really, really cool. I love it. I hope you're very proud of that story. It's pretty amazing. I like that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by writing a short story like that, did that help you discover the character that you were about to write a whole series about? Totally. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know that I, I really like uh, uh, Roger Zelazny. And one of the things that he did is he mm -hmm. made sure to write, he would write a few scenes uh, between important characters in the book that would never see the light of day. Um, that um, that basically informed him not just who those characters were, but how they related to one another and would occasionally give him the opportunity to refer back to a conversation that had happened before and stuff like that, 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 you know, really gave the books a sense of uh, truth. Um, and um, writing a short story like that first um, before you get to the book really does that. It, it accomplishes much the same thing. Um, and I, I liked it. It was fun. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. And you mentioned um, Meridides in here, like is on the back cover is one of the uh, thwarting elements to Masika's journey. Um, she was added at first, the whole, this uh, wrong way to have him was all written from Masika. And then um, you added Meridides in to give like another mm. dimension. What was that experience like to add that in? Um, well, I, I personally enjoy books where there are a variety of levels of antagonists mm -hmm. where you don't just have, um, like Stephen King is really good at this where you've got, um, you know, you've got some huge overarching supernatural bad guy and then you've got like the asshole that works down at the, you know, at the corner store and both of them will affect the plot um, in, in really uh, profound ways. 
Um, but one of them, you know, appears to be a much bigger threat until that, you know, the guy who works down at the corner store does the wrong thing at the wrong time and suddenly pitches the whole the whole story off a cliff. And I, I really uh, I really liked that. And the idea of her having a sister, the sister's kind of an avatar for the mother who you never see. But um, while while Masika is a, a little bit of a tomboy, um, Meridides is very proper and and very um, uh, well, like 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 Masika says, it has no use for anything that can't be done in a in a gown and and, and full makeup. Um, so she she doesn't she doesn't respect her little sister, and at the same time, she's very jealous of her little sister for all of the the attention that that her their dad gives gives her. So she's got a lot of motivation to to be kind of a jackass. And she does. And, she and does. um yeah. And no, as they as they knock down other other things in their way, Meridides is always there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ethan says that he likes the cover. He sees a bird. Yes, there is a bird. Mm-hmm. That uh, may or yeah. may not be the second god. There's no secrets here. That that is exactly who that is. Yeah, that that is the second god. Mm-hmm. And um, you can uh, pre-order this copy now. And also, Kevin, uh, where can people find you and your work, just in case they want an advanced reader copy? Uh, well, my uh, website is uh, kevinpetway.com, and. Um, I'm going to use this opportunity now to remind my wonderful wife to, uh, to add this book because I don't think it's up there yet. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Hey, we just revealed the cover. It shouldn't have been up there yet. So this is perfect. Oh, it's good timing. There you go. yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and obviously, uh, Amazon and, and, um, uh, Barnes and Noble.com and, um, is there anywhere else I can get it? Or is that that it for now? Uh, the paperback they can get anywhere they can order books. The ebook they can actually only get on Kindle right now. Okay, there you go. Uh, is it your first series is available everywhere in ebook form, paperback form, everything? So that one is everywhere. And what is the date that um, that that will actually be uh, when people pre-order it? When will they get it? November fourteenth is your launch day. November. Okay. Yep. Tuesday, November 14th is the launch. So we will see you back for that. And yes. we will have us on as the editor and we'll have. I'm going to put that um, one on my, on my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> one you should have on there. Yeah. You know, those calendars that I email you. Yeah. It's, it's on there. Um, so yeah, that's. <laughs> and um, so the release will be then, and that will be the next one. Um, and so we are very excited for this and it's incredible because you never know when an author hands you a new series, what, you know, it's like, sure, I love this series, but can you do this again? And I was like, ooh, <laughs> he can totally do it again. It's amazing. So you're going to love it. Um, so we'll put it up. You can go to our website, um, cursedragonship.com, and you can find the books there. You can pre-order it there, um, and you can, because it'll send you to the link. Um, or you can look at the the show notes after we're done recording. We'll make sure to get those up, and you can pre-order it there. Um, or go to pe- kevinpetway.com. You can join his newsletter, which he also has a free story from the first series on there. Um, and then you can get art copies that way. So thank you very much, and uh, we will see you soon. You have any last words, Kevin? Even though Masika and Meridides and, and uh, you know, uh, Rain, Heron, uh, these are all new characters. Mm-hmm. Um they are related to um, older characters from the from the previous series, and those the, there are definitely people throughout all of the books that will pop up here and there um, and and have their little cameos or more prolonged uh, uh, scenes with uh, you know with our heroes. So uh, if you if you liked the first books, you had your favorite characters. Um, it's very likely that you'll get to see them here and there throughout throughout this series. So excited. That was it. That was all I was gonna say.